So, uh, uh, good morning. And on behalf of uh, General Hoyer, Adjutant General, who we reluctantly could not be here today, I want to welcome everybody to the graduation. Uh, a couple of people I want to recognize. Uh, obviously, Jeff Ayers and uh, Lori Smith. Uh, they're, the, they're the two from the state. Uh, from the Guard, just put so much effort into, uh, into our program, Tim Haley and uh, Melissa Stewart. And of course, the, the three transitional agents that are represented here, Lisa Reed, Kevin Jackson, and Sharon Collins. Um, sure, it's especially good to have you here today. It truly, truly is a, a, a humbling experience and an honor to have you here. You know, great organizations, great industry, great uh, companies, great leaders are all people centered. They, they, everything begins and ends with people. And uh, the vision of Jobs and Hope. Is all about that. And sir, your presence here today just this is a great testament to uh, to your commitment to the people. But the program for Jobs and Hope to uh, to tear down barriers to employment, to train people, to help people get jobs, to earn a to earn a living wage. Uh, that goes a long way to getting after unfilled jobs in West Virginia. And filling those jobs are goes a long way towards bringing in new businesses and new industries into the state, which is economic prosperity for everyone. But it all begins and ends and never moves aside of people. So, sir, I thank you. Uh, thank you all. But, uh, but today, again, it's about our people. It's about our graduates. Um, we'll start with, I want to I introduce Lori Smith. She's the state uh, lead coordinator for Jobs and Hope. She's the one that, uh, Herds cats, organizes <laughs> tornadoes, and coordinates everything to make it happen. But uh, please, uh, please help me out. today to celebrate one of our many partnerships that has been developed through Jobs and Hope West Virginia, a governor's initiative that provides support, education, training, and jobs for West Virginians. I'm Lori Smith, I'm lead coordinator um, with the West Virginia Department of Education. The National Guard has been a partner from the very beginning of this program when it was just a dream introduced by Governor Justice. With their help and the help of many statewide partners, this program has become a reality. We are also excited to be able to offer the first National Guard sponsored greater operator training and we appreciate the participants here who dedicated their time. I had to change my comments because at first I said we appreciate the gentlemen who are here but if you will notice there's a lady that is one of our graduates as well. Jobs and Hope is the state's comprehensive response to the substance use disorder crisis. Established by our great governor, Jim Justice, in the West Virginia legislature, this program offers support through a statewide collaboration of agencies that provide linked services to participants. As we all know, West Virginia is ground zero for a convergence of many of today's challenges. We have the highest overdose rate in the country and the lowest workforce participation rate. These factors weigh heavily on our state's economy. At the heart of Jobs and Hope is a vision of providing West Virginians in recovery the opportunity to overcome obstacles that prevent them from establishing career success and strong family and community ties. This will allow participants to live up to their own aspirations while accomplishing the primary goal of putting West Virginians back to work. Jobs and Hope has placed 12 transition agents throughout the state and will soon be placing five more. Our transition agents help turn problems into opportunities. Transition agents provide participants the opportunity to overcome obstacles and barriers to employment so they feel empowered to move forward. They provide participants a network that leads to personal and professional success. And while our target population for Jobs and Hope is individuals um, recovering from substance use disorder, it's also open to any eligible participant who wishes to eliminate a barrier to employment. Since the beginning of August, our transition agents have received 650 referrals and the Jobs and Hope program currently has approximately 410 participants. Other program incentives um, are is an access to a wide span of treatment and recovery partners, pursuit and funding for education, certification and training in partnership with the Department of Education, community and technical colleges, 
and the National Guard. Transportation and child care assistance provided in partnership with West Virginia's Department of Health and Human Resources. Employer incentives provided through Workforce West Virginia. Assistance with the DMV reinstatement process and if needed, assistance with the expungement process through a partnership with Legal Aid of West Virginia. Jobs and Hope is an important part of the recovery process for individuals as they rebuild their lives and rebuilding their lives is the key to build and sustain a healthy and thriving state economy. Thank you to the National Guard for having us here today. Thank you to their staff for providing training and hosting our participants. Thank you to the transition agents for assisting participants in so many ways. And thank you to Governor Justice for giving us all an opportunity to give West Virginians jobs and hope. Thank you very much.
But our measure of success is, is all about you and your future. Um, so I, so I, I do, and I've said this several times, but, but I do hope you use the subscribe references. I do hope you hope stay in touch with us. Let us know what you're doing. Help us celebrate your successes. Uh, and, and please reach back to us if you, if you have any, any, anything whatsoever. Please do that. Um, one of our partners uh, was, is the West Virginia Contract Association. Uh, their director, Mike Klausner, and their associate director, Pat McDonald, came up two days ago. Uh, and brought some of their brought some of their members with them to conduct interviews. Uh, after the report, uh, one person one person got a job, and, the other, and several others will get a job uh, as soon as construction season I mean, They were very they were they were very impressed with uh, with using the videos and the training that you see. But because because we're because we're invested, in, I will give you a little bit of uh, hopefully I'm not old enough to be your dad. <laughs> the uh, so advice has served me well through through life, uh, but, but we do want you to be successful. But treat every day like a job. That if you can remember that, yeah, treat every day like a job. Uh, every day people are looking at you and they're making impressions on what kind of worker you are, what kind of work ethic you got, what part, of, how you how you remember the thing. And those those impressions carry forward, and they will get you know. Do they want to? Do they want to move up in the organization? Do they want to get raises to retain? Uh, and, and, and of course, the flip side of that is, you know, do, do we afford to lose the other? If you have a bad, if you make a bad impression, I know you won't do that. Uh, make a bad impression, but keep remember, treat every day like a job interview. Uh, and, and there's three ways that you do that. Uh, first one, and it sounds simple, but you'd be surprised if people screw it up. Show up. Don't you have to write this down? This is easy. Just show up. You'd be amazed how many people can't be where they're supposed to be when they're supposed to be there. Show up. Don't wander off. Don't, don't do anything uh, that you shouldn't do, but, but, but be there. The second thing is be a positive person. Be a, be a member of that team. Be a good coworker. Be a, be a friend, be a coworker, be a team member. Be, be the kind of person that you want to work with. And, and you'd, be, you'd be amazed at how that will help your life. And finally, Simply do the best that you can. Whatever it is, do the best that you can. I tell people, you know, if you're a dishwasher, be the best dishwasher for the Army has out there. If you're, whatever you're doing, do your best at it. Because good leaders, good managers, uh, good decision makers, they'll, they'll figure out where you excel at. And, and, and if you're a good team member, they want to keep you. And they'll put you where you can, where you can best flourish. But if you're here, they like the job and you show up. Be a positive person. No one's going to expect you to have a great day every day. Be a, be a generally positive person uh, and, and do your best. No one's going to no one's expect you to be flawless. Everybody makes mistakes. Uh, the people that own up to their mistakes and say, you know, hey, I kind of messed up the great always a little bit, let me fix it. And, and they're willing to learn. Those are the kind of people that you want to have on your team. And, and I'm telling you, you guys, Certainly, people I would I would want to have in my team. Uh, so, so again, please, please do stay in touch. Please, please let us know how we can help you. Please help us celebrate your successes. Uh, but thank you, thank you for your attitude. Thank you for all you did this week. It, it, you guys really, you really excel, and you really set a high bar for the future students that you got. But uh, please join me in uh, welcome, welcome to our governor uh, again, sir. It's a pleasure. It's an honor. It's humble to have you with us today.
simplifiers and obstructions. You know, and I am very proud that I'd be a simplifier. And you'll find in life as you go that the, the very easiest ideas are the ones that are the most, the, the most difficult to find. That's the way it always is. The simplest of all ideas. You know, I really believe that all the good ideas come to me from the good Lord, and I'll take credit for my badness. But, but I really, truly believe that just this, this program basically is founded around this premise. You know, let's get treatment if need. And let's get treatment for free if need. And then let's get real training for free to where you're really trained to do something. I mean, you can't go out here and run, run a, an eight-in board tractor and, and expect to get a job running a grader. You've got to be trained on something that is truly the equipment that you're maybe going to be running on the job site. And so get real training for free. And then get the ability to get expungement, to get away from this whatever bad has happened to you, a driver's license, whatever it may be. And then there's smart people. I mean, that was my idea. And it was called Jim's Brain. Now, it's now changed to Jobs and Hope. And the reason it changed is because of this crazy political world. You can't have your name or something. Biggest thing I've ever had. But thank God I'm not a politician. You know, but but I, I'm just a business guy that feels really honored to serve. But nevertheless, that's jobs and hope. But right behind all that, the good people, Laura, Deb, and all these trans transition agents and stuff like that, they came up with another component here that was unbelievable. Unbelievable. They said, we're going to put people with you and we're going to give you an ability to call somebody when things aren't going right. We're going to be, we're going to guide you through the process. We all need somebody to guide us. Now the other component of this thing is just this. Our national call. I mean, truly at the end of the day, and I've said it until I'm blue -burned. We owe everything in our lives, every single thing in America, in our lives, to our military active and our veterans. We owe everything to those that have passed away, everything. They always step up. They always step up. And here they are again, doing something that's unbelievable, you know. And they stand in the thing that is really unbelievable that you should get is they're thanking you and they're asking you to stay in touch with them to where they can even help you even more. The very people that ask so little and give so much all the time. All the very time. I mean, you know, I came up with an idea. We've got to have an idea. And then I talked to a lot of people into funding. We've got to have funding and everything. But these people always step up. And so to say you're humble that I'm here, no, I'm humble to be with you. And I mean it. You know, it's amazing. It's amazing what, uh, you know, what all of those proud and good, good, good people have given to each and every one of us. So I can't thank you enough. Now I want to talk to y'all just a second and tell you just this. You see this guy sitting here on his stool and he's a governor. And you probably think, well, you know, he's some hotty toddy guy and all that kind of stuff. Or you may think, well, not only that, he's a billionaire. Well, you know, gosh, you know, I'm, I'm not a billionaire. I've got all kinds of issues and problems and I've struggled and everything. Else. But you don't know me. You don't know that at one time in my life, you know, I was just a kid and, and I, you know, thank goodness I didn't ever do anything with any kind of drugs, I don't smoke, I don't drink, but I have done about every crazy other thing you can possibly do. And I've had a lot of fun doing it and everything. Right? <laughs> and so, so what I'm saying to you is 
we all we all drift and we all make mistakes. Every last one of us. There's nobody perfect in this world. Nobody but one. And uh, and we'll never, never even own up to anything close to you. So if you just think, if you just step back from that and just think, this guy, this guy that's sitting here with white hair, just the other day was you in lots and lots of ways. It's hard to believe. It's hard to believe. Can you imagine that I grew up and my grandparents never had indoor plumbing? I mean, can you imagine that really and truly we didn't have nothing? Nothing. I grew up in a little rented house across from a dead end street with a cemetery across the road and played in that cemetery all the time. Really and truly, I was you. Every time I visited my grandparents on one side of my family, no indoor plumbing on the other side, lived in a little coal company house where you had at night, the house was, was fueled with coal and and there was a grate right in the middle of the house that actually was a furnace and everything. And at night, when you were barefoot, you had to jump across the grave and you'd burn your feet. You know, truly, in so many ways, I was you. And if testimony to this great country couldn't be any better, look what I'm doing. Now, I would tell you all just this. You have taken steps in your life that are amazing. You have done something probably without you even knowing. What if I were to say to you, what do you got to do in life to get better? I don't care what you do. What do you got to do? What do you got to do? What would you say? What do you got to do to get better in your life? The first thing you got to do, what do you got to do? Admit that you're wrong. Oh, God. You are so wrong. wrong. You are home run. Honest to goodness, I mean to the Lord, to the Lord above. I could ask that question all over the place, all the time, and nobody would have got it. Nobody. I asked ball teams that. They said, practice harder, be more focused, be more determined, you know, all that kind of, be more passionate, all that. And nobody says that. But that's the very first thing in life you've got to do. You're amazing to get that right, right between you guys. I mean, amazing. And that's what you've done. You basically said, I'm screwing up on something, and I need some help. You're going to be on your way instantaneously. You're going to get better beyond belief. You're going to get absolutely better at anything you do. I mean, if you're an alcoholic, you've got to stand up in front of the world and say, I'm an alcoholic. If you get saved in church, the first thing you do is stand up. I'm messing up. That's what you do. And then you're on your way. Now, the other, other components are just this. Likely, likely, of six of you, and I hope and pray it doesn't happen, but likely, one of you may, just may not make it. Maybe. Hope and pray that's not going to be the case. But I would say just this. As you look around, you know, you've got to think, is that going to be me? Or, are you going to be the next person that's sitting on this stool? And if you really have what it takes next, is it takes passion in your life. You know, one of our great leaders here spoke of, you know, enthusiasm, showing up as a job interview every day and all that kind of stuff. And enthusiasm is so contagious, it's unbelievable. And true, you know, I don't know this. I'm speaking to you right from my heart because I want to see you do fabulous in your life. You know, trust me, nobody wants to be with a stick in the in life. No, everybody wants to be around somebody that's fun, not be talking and laughing and everything. God gave you the ability to smile and to laugh. He gave you that for a reason. This life's tough. And it's going to get tougher. And then it will get easier. It gets tougher. Every year you go by, it'll be tougher. There'll be more things that will happen to you, and absolutely, whether it be children or whatever it may be, there'll be more things that will happen to make it tougher. This journey is really tough. And you better really, really realize that with that God-given ability to smile and laugh, it's important that you do that. Now, 
You don't have that around people that are dragging around and being negative and sticks in the mud all the time. Nobody wants to be with them. Show up to work. Really, really important. Really important that you show up. Absolutely. Just admit your mistakes. I mean, for God's sake, to live, everybody screws up stuff. Last thing is this. If you don't have a passion for what you're doing, you're not going to succeed. That's all there is to it. This may be the first stepping stone to lead you to the next place, to the next place, to the next place. But you have got to have real passion in your life for what you're doing. If you have it, you're going to knock it out of the park. I guarantee it to you. You're going to knock it out of the park and knock it out of the park and keep knocking it out of the park. You know what life was when maybe you didn't know where you were going? You don't have any idea how great this life can be and how satisfying this life can be if you get on a pathway with a good job and you're really thinking right about stuff. And, and the other flip side of it is this. I wouldn't let anybody pull you down. Don't let people pull you back down. My God, listen. listen, society in general wants to be mediocre. You know what I mean by mediocre? Do y'all know what I mean by that? You know, what, I, what I'm saying is, if you had 25 or 50 or 1,000 people here, there's an awful lot of them that are, are C's. You know, there's not many A's. And there's some D's and F's, that's for sure. But there's a lot of C's. And the C's, believe it or not, as you become an A, they'll try to pull you back. They'll try to pull you back all the time. Because they don't really like you being an A in a lot of ways. You can do it. You can really do it. This country's unbelievable. And you've got a support staff right now with you that are unreal. And you've got the greatest heroes in the land that are right here at this wonderful, wonderful facility. So I congratulate everybody. The program's working. 650 applicants or people that are inquiries or whatever it may be. I don't know more exactly what the, the right word is. But 650. We've been chasing for a solution forever. We've got a problem. We've got a real issue, a problem. Our people are either struggling with some level of addiction or stuff like that, or they're struggling because they don't know what they don't know how to do something. You know? Doesn't matter to us. If you've got a problem with addiction, we want to do the addiction, then we want to teach you how to do something. You know, if you don't have a problem with addiction, we still want to teach you how to do something. We got to do you realize think about this. Think about it. And you just start. You just start. Okay? You can't have the enchilada at the end until you start. Alright? But do you realize in West Virginia today, I think we've got 19,000 jobs. Imagine this. We've got 19,000 jobs that we can't fill today that are $90,000 a year plus jobs. We're waiting on it. We're just waiting on it. It's all there is to it. As you get better and better and better, this day is moving. And there's good stuff happening. Lots and lots of good stuff happening. But we got to keep on going. There's lots, lots, lots more to do. you got to remember this too. I didn't become a politician just to ride around in a parade and be the governor and have people pat me on the back. I became a politician just like these great men and women have done here. And I became a politician to serve. I don't want a thing for me. No. Nothing. It is one tough job. That's all there is to it. And you get so much crap, it is unbelievable. And it's mighty easy to turn when you're going up the hill and say, Dad, this is not worth this. I want to be both on this afternoon. This is not worth this job. I mean, for God's sake, it's a little. You know, I know this giant buck is, and I can't even get there to hunt. You know, now. And so, so at the end of the day, but 
when you come and you see you, and you see these great men and women, you see all these people that are really involved in this program that are really doing then you see the great people that are reporting on all the stuff we do in life from the media standpoint. They have such a big role in what we do. But at the end of the day, then you know, you know really and truly that God has a bigger plan. Really, you've got to shove that bow hunting back just a little bit. There'll be a day you go bow hunting. But this day is really important. Really important. So I congratulate you. I would tell you that uh, as you go, know that there's going to be a lot, a lot of tough days. Try to smile and laugh as much as you can. And absolutely just have a real passion for what you're doing and realize that all of us screw up all the time. All the time. You'll get there. You'll get there. If you keep your eye on the ball and stay focused, laugh a lot, Say a prayer every now and then. Be thankful. Be great West Virginians in that the one thing that we have that is really, really special is we appreciate it. We're loving, we're good, we're caring, we're low crime, we're good people. But we know how to appreciate others. You know, if you'd opened the door for me and I'd have been an eight-year-old and I wouldn't have stopped, thank you. I had to have my hands. I can't do that. <laughs> That's why we're so good. That's exactly why we're so good. So, I congratulate you. You're on your way. You made a great big first step. That first step was saying, I'm screwing up on something. No, we better. Off you go. That's what you said, something. I like that hair deal you got going on, too. <laughs> You know, my hair was brown one time too. <laughs> look what you got for to look forward to. Uh, <laughs> no, listen, I, I congratulate you and I thank all of y'all so much. Really, truly. It's a real honor to be here. And the last of my last is this. You'll find it's not every day that you get to touch a lot. It's not every day that you genuinely get to touch a lot. And I'll tell you that you feel doggone good when you do. So keep out after it. Keep doing all the kinds of great stuff. you got a wonderful, wonderful future in front of you. Do it proud. All right, guys. I'm done.